This uh, next hour, it's going to be all about preparing your move to the cloud. So we've been talking about digital transformation. It was a topic of the executive keynote. I'm sure you've seen a lot of blog posts, a lot of information out there in the community as well. And in this hour, we're going to be talking about our new business transformation as a service offering called Rise with SAP. So we will have an, an expert panel, right? A live Q&A. And uh, actually, when I, when I first saw, we will have a Rise with SAP um, uh, topic uh, here. I was wondering if we can explain why Rise with SAP is relevant for developers at all. That's a great question. And that's actually why we invited four experts to join us today um, in just a few minutes. And they'll be sharing, they'll be kind of setting the stage, really kind of explaining what Rise with SAP is first, because there might be some of you out there that haven't heard about it yet. Um, so they'll be setting the stage, they'll be explaining the details, and then they'll be diving into why it's relevant for developers, how you can leverage the technologies that we offer, how you can leverage the capabilities, where BTP come in, comes into play. You know, what about ABAP, like we saw in the, in the intro for the student yeah. session, what about ABAP? I just, I can't get enough of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be deep diving into all those, all those topics with our experts. Now, this expert interview is kind of an expert interview plus Q&A, so it's a little bit different than we've, what we've been doing before, right? Yeah. So, with, with that, I can already see that we have your boss, Stefan <laughs> Peach, who was also on stage uh, on the keynote, uh, together with, uh, with Sven, with Karl, um, with uh, Uwe, and together with them, we will now have an, uh, an interview with, with them. So, hello, everybody. Good morning. Hi. Thanks for joining hey, good us. Morning. Thanks for joining. <laughs> hey, good morning. Thanks right. for having us. Excellent that you're all here. Okay, so I'm going to um, kick it off. And the first question actually goes to you, Uwe. Um, so again, we just want you to set the stage and really explain what is Rise with SAP? What's it all about? Of course, happy to. And uh, as you can imagine, it's a question we are getting quite, quite some time, right? Um, so RISE is a new offering that we uh, launched at SAP um, beginning of this year. And the idea of this offering is that we would like to help our customers to answer the question how they can, can get to uh, S4HANA, to S4HANA Cloud, from where they are today. Because uh, uh, now being more than six years in the S4HANA journey, we of course know that our customers are at completely different starting points. And we were always thinking, what is it that we can do to really help our customers uh, dependent on their starting point to really, re to really give them guidance and to help them to basically pick them by the hand um, to move them to S4HANA Cloud. And that's the idea of RISE. Uh, that's why RISE starts with the business process, including uh, the BPI components, also the new Signavio offering that we uh, got via the acquisition, uh, because here we are picking the customer at the business process. This is why RISE uh, um, includes also a business technology platform as the technical foundation to the, for the move to S4HANA Cloud, be it now for extensions, be it for uh, integration, uh, be it just as common semantic layer. And this is why it also includes the, um, uh, uh, the network connection, because at the end we would like to enable a collaborative business um, for our customers. So that's the, that's the idea um, of RISE. Um, in addition to that, um, RISE delivers to our customers and, uh, a, a common framework and the structure that they can also use now to work with their partners to really get a tailored offering for their move to S4HANA Cloud. And this is also where RISE is really um, fundamentally helping and standardizing it. So RISE at the end, it is not a product. RISE is a, is a new offering, a packaging from SAP with which we would like to help our customers to move to S4HANA Cloud. Excellent, yeah, thank you great. for setting the stage. Yeah, and uh, I have another question to you, uh, Uwe, and maybe then Sven and Steffen uh, can add to the answer. When we are talking about the digital transformation, um, what kind of role does uh, SAP play here to help the customers tackle this transformation uh, step. Can you mm -hmm. explain a bit? Yes, of course. I mean, and that's that's obviously a very good uh, question as well, because as as you said in the question, it's all about uh, transformation, right? Yeah. And um, 
What we can what we can do from our side and what we are doing with uh, SAP S for HANA Cloud being part of the Rise offering is that we are delivering best practices or I also sometimes call it next practices because it's not only that we are delivering standard processes but we are delivering in our solution standard processes of the future. And with these standard processes, we can help really our customers to do their business now in a different way, in a better way, in a more automated way, using more intelligence, using more process automation in it, but also to, uh, to uh, um, uh, make them ready for new types of business scenarios. Right? We are living in a um, very difficult uh, environment at the moment. Um, industries are changing. Industries are changing, for instance, moving to service-oriented models. This is why you find in S4HANA Cloud, for instance, predefined new scenarios for, um, for services models with our solution order concept. Um, in the pandemic, we have seen that uh, online channels got extremely important. So this is why we developed a new uh, process and also a new capability for return management, because all out of a sudden people that are opening up an online channel are seeing that 90% of the articles are just sent back um, by the customers, so they have to do something with it. Um, so this is why we invested into a return management functionality and, uh, and, and process. And last but not least, with our industry cloud, we are uh, developing together with our partner uh, ecosystem, um, highly verticalized applications running on top of S4HANA Cloud with which our customers can differentiate. This is uh, how we are helping our customers in their transformation. Yeah. Maybe Sven, Stefan, you Maybe want I, to add? I can yeah. build on. I can build on top of that. So, and Uwe said it nicely, that next practice. And then you also raised the question, what should developers do? I think we need to own and we need to define the true north via those best and next practices and enable afterwards the clients and the partners to activate what they have. So it's not back to customizing with a toolbox, whatever you want. You want to activate certain functions. And that starts with also proper assessment. And um, part of the RISE package with BPI, Business Process Intelligence, the developers shall use when they code, when they define content, leverage, and fitting, but also a clever taxonomy that is reusable. Um, I personally believe that software as a service, and we're very good in the first S, which is software, <laughs> and still have a lot to do to learn as a service. That's the ultimate level of standardization you can get, and thus also the highest innovation speed. What developers need to do and also start to focus on is actually APIs. How can we configure that? How can we extend it to still be flexible, but actually build it on a very clear handshake via whitelisted APIs? Because one thing is true, you build it, so you own it. And no matter what deployment model or scenario it could be a two tier where the company still has all that knowledge that they need in their mothership, but for certain workloads or for certain functions or subsidiaries or geos, they want the highest standardization. That's what developers need to think about when they develop. Maybe Stefan, you want to add to that? Yeah, sure. So I think we, we are in an increasingly competitive environment and, and we see that uh, basically every day. Where speed matters and the ability to basically quickly adapt to changing market conditions um, is an increasingly important capability and technology and the ability to understand the technology and to apply it properly is key and here uh, SAP comes into play so to differentiate and to seize new opportunities customers need to flexibly build extend and enhance their core processes and applications through APIs as uh, Sven just uh, mentioned and True transformation requires, um, let's say, holistic approach. And the SAP BTP complements the business foundation as for HANA uh, and SAP LOB solutions with capabilities to extend, to integrate with other SAP and non-SAP solutions and to turn data into value. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So now that you already mentioned BTP, Sven mentioned developers again, we talked <laughs> about APIs. Stefan, the next question is for you. Let's really deep dive into how we support developers. What, what do we provide for them to be able to, you know, use, um, go through their digital transformation journey? Yeah, good question. How much time do I have? <laughs> we can give uh, you five 
five, six minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let's give it a try. So customers invested heavily in customizing the business suite to their needs and developers really did a great job to build the extensions and custom apps that provide additional business value and the differentiation that make our customers even more successful. Now, Rise with SAP helps customers to transform um, these landscapes to the cloud. And looking at the business transformation from a developer's perspective means that we leverage past investments by migrating the custom code to the cloud wherever meaningful. And this goes along with a chance to optimize TCO by identifying and eliminating unused custom code or uh, to figure out where custom code is not necessary any longer because we have now uh, standard functionality in place. And for sure, it provides the opportunity to build new applications and expansions on cloud native technology using the SAP BTP services. So uh, to your question more precise, SAP support um, developers in a variety of ways on that journey. So first with uh, tool support. Um, the uh, SAP readiness check combines information from various tools and perspectives. So simplification items, sizing information, uh, and a lot more. And the custom code migration app is the centerpiece for developers. And let me share with you some uh, highlights. So you can analyze existing custom code uh, and check whether it is ready for SAP S4 HANA or uh, SAP BTP. Uh, you can remove obsolete custom code based on usage analysis. Um, it provides quick fixes um, and a lot more. Olga uh, Dolonskaya, I don't know if you know her, uh, she wrote some great blogs and uh, ran the ticket sessions, uh, DT100 and DT101. And um, if you found the time, I really recommend to watch these recordings. Yeah, great. So second way how SAP supports is enablement. You can uh, just launch the new learning experience, uh, which is available under learning.sap.com. So if you didn't have the time yet, really recommend to visit that site and make use of the BTP learnings uh, that are related uh, to uh, everything around uh, the various uh, BTP capabilities. And they range from the basics to certification uh, and provide really, really great uh, journeys. And they navigate you to also other well-known resources like the um, SAP Learning Hub or Open SAP or the SAP Developer Center uh, or the SAP Community for sure. So there is a lot of valuable content uh, available. Uh, check it out. And um, as I already mentioned in the keynote, uh, the SAP Discovery Center is also a truly very uh, valuable source. So once you are familiar with the basics of the BTP, the Discovery Center helps you to implement real life use cases. And I recommend browsing through the missions available and to gain some ideas how to generate, um, let's say additional business value and to see uh, what is possible. And finally, um, SAP helps through its commercial models. So Rise with SAP includes CPA credits that help you getting started with the BTP. And you can use free tier plans as well as the CPA credits. And finally, um, as you have heard in the keynote, now even as an individual developer, you have the opportunity to explore uh, the BTP through free tier plans and get your hands on the latest technologies from SAP. So um, from a support perspective, there is not a lack of opportunities, uh, but I think for many of us, rather a lack of time to try uh, everything out, but really start today. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Yeah, that's 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 great. So also, you kept it under time, so that was good. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect timing. <laughs> so um, I, th I think it's really important also during that journey because it's not a, a big bang approach that uh, customers will have here, but rather a transition phase. 
uh, I think it's good to have these capabilities to uh, maybe try out things right at, until a certain point. And also with these uh, free tier service plans, at a certain point in time, you just can't switch, right? So you don't have to create a, another account on, on uh, the SAP business te technology platform, but simply can transition over the data to a productive uh, service plan, which is fantastic. Absolutely. You yeah. can start without any financial commitment yeah. and move to production later. Yeah. Um, but to quote um, uh, the developer key, uh, people in the developer keynote and also in the student session, what about ABAP? <laughs> so um, I think um, let's now maybe get to, to Carl um, about some ABAP specifics and um, the question about what the role is of now in-app um, extensions versus um, embedded extensions versus ABAP, uh, the, the ABAP environment. So how um, and, and, for, uh, and specifically when should the developer use which option of those? Can you maybe explain a bit, Carl? Sure. So um, as for Cloud actually offers three extensibility options for um, customers and partners. And the first one uh, is Kios extensibility. Kios extensibility is a thorough set of web-based uh, authoring tools where you can up, uh, adapt the user interface of your applications of S1 Cloud. For example, you can change the layout of your screen, you can add custom fields and custom objects. And all of these tools do not require any coding skills. So basically they are no code uh, tools for the key user. Um, uh, the second option, and you already mentioned this, uh, we, the second option is we call it Steampunk, that's the project name, but the official name is SAP BTP ABAP Environment. And uh, this allows customers and partners to build side-by-side -side applications on top of sub BTP. Uh, they can use the ABAP RESTful application programming model for that, which is our modern way to build um, Fiori applications for the cloud optimized on SAP HANA. And, um, uh, when they want to access the S4HANA cloud system, they have to invoke uh, remote APIs, which are published in the SAP API hub. And as a matter of fact, many of our customers and also partners are using the side-by-side -side approach to build loosely coupled extensions to S4HANA cloud. Mm -hmm. And partners uh, very much like this to build multi-tenancy enabled uh, applications to save a lot of resources in cloud operation. Now, the third option, this is embedded steampunk, how uh, we call it, or the official name is SAP S for HANA Cloud uh, uh, ABAP environment. Uh, Jürgen, mentioned, uh, Jürgen Müller um, uh, announced it in the keynote, and Rich Heilman was giving uh, a great demo in the developer's keynote. Now, this option is um, mainly intended for tightly coupled extensions. Uh, with this option, customers and partners can log on directly to the S4 HANA Cloud system and develop their custom extensions or partner uh, code directly on top of the uh, S4 HANA Cloud technology stack. So they have a direct access to, to the underlying basis. They also have access to local APIs, which are offered by our SAP S4 HANA applications like finance, procure, produce, and sales. So in a sense, um, it's a bit similar like in the traditional on-premise world, but there's a big but, but you always work against the public interfaces. You do not modify code. You do not uh, change code, but you access the SAP objects through a well-defined interface is properly documented, and therefore your application will continue to run after version change or upgrade without any adaptation efforts. And we think uh, this third option closes the gap for very tightly coupled extensions, for example, extensions that run in the same logical unit of work or where you have heavy access to the underlying um, the data model of core data services where you cannot afford to do remote connectivity or data replication. Yeah, so, so with, with that, we are really giving also developers choice, right? Depending uh, A, on the uh, actual skills that developers have, right? And B, also on what kind, uh, what kind of application do they want to build? Should it be rather tightly integrated? Uh, or rather uh, separate um, uh, side by side. So uh, thanks for clarifying that, Carl. Yeah. And as Jürgen mentioned in the keynote, with this new embedded steampunk or the SAPS for HANA Cloud 
Abab Environment, which is a very long name, so I'm glad he said Embed in Steampunk also, we do kind of close that gap that was missing in the SAP S4 HANA cloud um, to be able to you know, adapt that to your specific business needs. So that's, that's great. Um, we do have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, the first one, I think it might be for either Sven or Uwe, but if anybody else wants to chime in, please feel free. So SAP currently has three SAP S4 HANA Cloud editions. We have SAP S4 HANA Cloud, SAP S4 HANA Cloud Extended Edition, and SAP S4 HANA Cloud Private Edition. The question is, which one does RISE cover, and what happens with HEC or on any on-premise systems on hyperscalers? I can maybe give it a start, and then um, Sven can also, can also add. And, um, let me maybe start with this. I mean, as, as a good German company, we are sometimes even a little bit more academic and complex than we uh, would have to be. Um, uh, this is why uh, we are also moving forward. We are now simplifying our offering. We are saying at the end, uh, we have two um, product variants for SAP S4 HANA Cloud. Um, one is uh, equivalent to what we are calling public cloud today. Um, this is the uh, most streamlined offering um, that is coming with the highest level of standardization, but that of course also requires customer um, to really transform from where they are today, uh, be it already on an SAP system or maybe coming completely new to SAP, um, uh, then to a public cloud uh, ERP solution. And then the second option we are having, um, uh, this is what we are calling um, S4 HANA Cloud um, Private Edition. And um, this is basically combining also what we were before calling private edition and extended, because at the end, this is a tailored environment. Um, this is a, um, an instance that is dedicated to the customer that gives the customer more flexibility. And that coming, coming back again a little bit from uh, um, uh, what I started with, uh, it is the, the topic of um, customers are having different starting points and RISE is all about how we are getting them um, to, uh, to S4 HANA Cloud. And this is, uh, and this is then, of course, uh, if a customer is coming from a complex ECC environment, they have maybe hundreds of ECC systems they are running with multiple uh, uh, levels of customizations and uh, even modifications. Is it uh, reasonable that such a complex environment will be moved in one um, shot to a public cloud, uh, highly standardized uh, ERP environment? It is not very likely. And this is why it is very clear for these customers, uh, um, we have what uh, we have our private cloud environment. And this is the, uh, this is the right solution uh, to go because this solution is really picking up the customer where they are today. We are helping them to uh, run public cloud innovations like our new S4 HANA project management, like the new solution orders. They can all run it around that core, but that core gives them flexibility um, to really uh, um, come from where they are today to a, uh, to a more standardized, but completely SAP operated, operated cloud environment. And these are our, these are our two options uh, to go with. And all of these other variants that you also mentioned, like um, um, there's also the possibility to do hack, hack subscription. Um, this all at the end now falls into these two environments. We either do a, a highly standardized public cloud or a, we, we do a um, dedicated environment in a private cloud. And these are our two options also falling under the rise umbrella um, that we are going with into the future. Yeah, maybe just to add two thoughts building on, on, the, on top of that, I think this is why RISE is so important and also so good because additions and, and versions and flavors are getting irrelevant. We're picking up the customer where he is and thanks to BPI, we can analyze properly. Of course, you're going to define a North Star in the highest standardization, but you go your way. But we're not a cloud 1.0 vendor, which actually has just one option, which is you change whatever and you take. And, and I think that, that that freedom that we give actually also develops at the client in the partner ecosystem and Colin nice fully explained it. The ability that we give developers also to learn that fast that Stefan nicely explained, that all needs to come together. I just happen to believe that the standardization appetite out there in the market is higher as we think and maybe also in personal thought in the past. So that's why I think we should stop talking about environments that we think today, we embrace the client where he is and the contract and the, the relation we have, thanks Rice, is the most trustful we have in the industry because it's long lasting, it's as a service, 
business process transformation. And together we'll figure out to, to apply the best version, the best addition, the best solution, the best combination. And I think this is also how developers need to think about it. Like I'm not just developing one piece and then I give it away. You build it, you own it, but you uh, own it also in an environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks so much uh, to uh, both of you, Uwe and Sven. Um, here's another question, which was uh, highly voted. Um, I think it uh, goes into uh, responsibilities for certain tasks coming along with um, with the digital transformation. Um, so uh, the question is, in case of Rise with SAP, from a customer's point of view, who is owning um, the tasks, um, cloud, the, the infrastructure uh, set up in the cloud, um, the code remediation, uh, for the basis, security, integration, and um, with who? It's ASK, uh, SAP, Hyperscaler, or the um, SI. Um, not, not sure who would be the best one to ask. It's maybe also again. Maybe, maybe let me give it a start and, and colleagues chime in. And again, it, it connects to what I said earlier. Yeah. Um, depending on where the customer is today, uh, he might already run a lot on his premises, which is actually on premise. He has the staff, he has it under order. Why not? He, he might use infrastructure as a service from us, from the hyperscalers underneath. And again, if you go all the way down to SaaS, everything is done by the vendor, by us, together with the partners. And I think that degree and that ability to adopt to where the customer is, which business processes he wants to iterate and innovate fast, that also defines how much he gives us to do for him. And, and I think that's why there is no either or, that is exactly the potential that we have based on a rise engagement uh, to figure out fast and apply that on a long-lasting relationship together with the clients. Okay. And even trying to give it a very simple spin. I mean, uh, uh, because the question was who is taking the responsibility of and that and with RISE, it is exactly SAP um, who's taking the responsibility. That is why we build this offering because we have seen this issue that a customer that is coming from on-premise and now moving to the cloud, um, uh, they are, they are of course um, also considering sometimes hmm, when I'm going just to the hyperscaler, am I then really in a cloud environment as well? It sounds like because I have uh, infrastructure as a service, but the difference is, uh, uh, then they have the hyperscaler taking care of the infrastructure, but they still have to have somebody taking care of the system operations. They still have to ha have somebody taking care of the application management as such. And of course, then there is SAP that is doing the classical support. And uh, and then there you have the question, hmm, who is now really the one who's responsible if something doesn't work? And that's the difference with RISE, because with RISE, all of these things that I, that I talked about, and the responsibility of SAP. So there's one uh, hand to shake. Also, if there's an issue, one throw to choke. And that's the main uh, the main advantage. It's also one of the reasons why we built that RISE offering in the way how we done it. Fantastic. Um, so thank you so much. We are getting um, more and more questions over here and uh, we need to uh, close now uh, in any case. Um, thank you so much, uh, Steffen, Uwe, Sven and Karl for joining us here on stage at TechEd and Channel One. Uh, was great talking to you. Thanks for all your responses, and see you soon. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 So, so much. yeah. Yes, and uh, people are very interested in in that topic. So also to understand how developers actually um, can take make use of it. Right? Yeah. Was was quite interested. And the responsibility topic yeah. I thought was super interesting. Yeah. And also, Definitely. I mean, for, also for the questions that we were not able to answer now. Yeah. Um, we also have a uh, Rise with SAP community page. Mm -hmm. um, we have the uh, we ha where you can actually put your questions on, which we have not been uh, answered so far. Uh, we have the uh, Keep Learning tab on the uh, TechEd webpage. It must be in the webpage like uh, here mm -hmm. somehow, um, where you have the learning zone with the learning journeys, also some with uh, related to the um, to, to Rise with SAP. In the Discover More section, as I said, also relating to the communities. Um, the community in general is also a very good source also to, um, to learn more. And um, there is also the um, Dev 201 session. Dev 201. Dev 201, yeah. Mm -hmm. That also was mentioned by Carl before, um, including also a blog post um, about ABAP at TechEd 2021. So in case you want to have a look into that, just go to the community uh, and search for that uh, blog post ABAP at TechEd 2021. Yeah, um, and just maybe to highlight a few key takeaways um, from our side, definitely important to remember, Rise is not a product, 
right? It's an offering. So don't look for rise as something you can consume directly, but look at everything that it offers in, you know, in this packet to offering that you can leverage from. The other important thing is, and I think Sven and Uwe, Uwe started to cover it and then uh, Stefan ended it, it's really about the business value that you've already created. So you've already built something on-prem, you already have a lot of content there, a lot of custom code. The idea is to be able to carry that business value forward into the cloud and not, you know, without disruption, not to lose any valuable um, business applications that you've been built in the past, but really transform that into this new cloud world. Um, and yeah, of course, like uh, Rui mentioned, there are several learning opportunities out there. Like uh, it was mentioned in the keynote, we did launch this new learning with SAP experience and it is completely free. So check out all the content that we have available and just continue to learn, to try things out and see what, what works for you. Yeah, and not to forget that all these sessions are also recorded. So uh, in case you have missed it now or maybe just jumped in at a later point in time, uh, all uh, sessions will be available on demand. Yeah. With that said, I think it's uh, time also to look into the uh, community and also the chat. Uh, and for that, we also have uh, Tom Young here on stage. Hey, Tom. Special Hi. guest. Thanks for special... having me back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, Tom, what was going on in the chat uh, during, during TechEd? So, have you some interesting comments, some questions that you saw uh, as, a, as maybe as a pattern coming always across? Yeah, since we're coming to nearly the end, uh, we thought we'd take this time to summarize some of the things that are going on in the chat overall. But first, we really want to thank everybody for taking part in the chat. It would have been a pretty boring uh, 48 <laughs> hours if nobody had joined in the chat. Yeah. It was really you, the audience, that kept things interesting and, and going there. But I also want to thank the developer advocate team, my, my team that uh, has been here um, all 48 hours in shifts. And, um, you know, in between running down here and doing things on stage and the developer keynote, we've been in there interacting with the uh, community throughout it all. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it did get a little quiet in the middle of the night both times uh, when we got into the replay hours. Uh, yeah. th there was little stretches where there wasn't a whole lot going on. Um, so a little challenging at times for yeah. some of us to stay awake, but then it would pick right back up as soon as we got back into live times and then really active all throughout the, uh, all throughout the day. Um, one of the interesting discussions that, uh, that we saw, I believe it was yesterday afternoon, there was a lot of discussion about the virtual set mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the technology behind it and, uh, you know, the connection. Some, some people know this is a very similar technology to what, like, Disney used to... For the Mandalorian. Yeah, for the which, Mandalorian. Oh, my God, my son will freak out yeah. if, he, yeah. if he gets to It blew to know my this. mind when yeah. I found out. Yeah, so there was a really <laughs> extensive discussion about that in the chat the other day. And there was an interesting thread in the chat, um, kind of in the same hour block, about the shoes that everyone is wearing. So well, there was discussion about, oh, what kind of shoes are, are they allowed to wear? <laughs> and and um, actually, some may not know, uh, uh, Kevin from mm -hmm. my team did the developer keynote. We had to cover up the logos on his shoes because he had rather Ooh. large logos. So that was a whole discussion that we had in the chat. I didn't know that either. So that's nice, the background information. But you do have some cool SAP, yes, I have SAP the, shoes. I have the SAP uh, shoes. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. So those are allowed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, of course, uh, Casimir the cat mm -hmm. is uh, a is common thread. I don't, I don't you, see where the maybe, I think he was there coding he before, but now there he is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, suggestion in the chat that was discussed earlier today. Mm -hmm. Uh, please bring Casimir back yeah, in whatever form tech ed is in the future. Make sure that Casimir sticks around, uh, but also a, a suggestion that Casimir needs a friend uh, and a suggestion of a dog to oh, go along it. with Casimir. I love the cat. it. Um, yeah. Um, then just kind of to wrap up, um, the discussion doesn't have to end just because tech ed comes to an end. We have the discussion groups that are part of the SAP community designed for just the sort of interactions that we've been having in the chat over the past two days, where you don't have to have a formal question, you know, you're not writing a, a blog post, but you really just want to interact with other people in the SAP community. So use that, uh, use the community groups and in particular the jumping off point of the, uh, the tech ed community groups mm -hmm. to continue that discussion. And uh, my team, the developer advocates that have been interacting with you in the chat, that doesn't end either just because TechEd ends. We've got lots of ways that we interact with the community, both through the community groups as, as we have going forward, but also we do 
multiple weekly live streams on the SAP Developers YouTube channel, and we're always interacting with the community on social media as well. And the community calls are also really great. The community calls, that's another way for the community to, to interact, all kind of tied up with the, the whole community umbrella there. And then maybe the last thing that I would, uh, I, I would wrap up with is the most active chat today that we've had was actually during the Devtoberfest uh, review mm -hmm. hour. A lot of people asking about, you know, maybe missed Devtoberfest or they were sharing what they liked about it. And it was great because we were taking notes because mm -hmm. when we all get back <laughs> next week, we're going to start planning for Devtoberfest next year. <laughs> um, so there were suggestions of what people would like to see more of or, or expand and things like that. So that was a really great start to already our planning for next year. Excellent. Great. Thanks, so, Tom. Thanks for the, uh, the recap. And also, we will have you back to talk specifically about DevToberfest. So that was a really nice kind yep, of Looking intro forward to, to that. it. All right. See you later then. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. OK. I'm getting sad. Like, yeah, it's, a little bit. A little bit. I mean, yeah. it, it's almost over, right? It's just an hour and a half, more or less. An hour and a half? Yeah. What, what, were, what were your highlights so far? Oh my God, there are so many. Like, okay, if I have to choose, let's say I'll choose four. Can I get four or maybe five? Four or five? Four. Okay, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We will see. If we'll I want to say five, I'll say five. Yeah. You know this about me. Um, so the first thing I really want to highlight is the amount of inter interactivity that we had during this virtual tech ed. I mean, again, it's the second time that we're doing it virtually. And I think this year we really added, for example, the live chat and all the um, all the hours on channel one with the expert Q&As and also the expert Q&As going on in the session tracks. And they were jam packed with questions and people supporting us. And it was very, very cool to see how you are living this uh, virtual tech. So and people really, really made this their event, right? We also saw it here, for example, in the Rise with SAP discussion. We saw it yesterday, very late in the evening uh, with the security topic. People are Late in the evening for us, for us probably early yeah, for others, yeah. but yeah, but, yeah, but, definitely. But still, I mean, this this level of interaction is something I also was was amazed of. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe another uh, thing I wanted to highlight was, were the student sessions. Um, I think it was really cool that we brought in a fresh new perspective, fresh new eyes, looking into how they're learning with SAP, what they're interested in, how they want to continue their career. Because again, we always need to kind of freshen up and look towards the newer generation to see to see what's happening. So I thought that was, again, super interesting. And as I've said a million times before, I love the intro video. I would watch it like 100 million times. Um, I think it's, it's hilarious. Um, Another really cool thing is all the learning content that we've added. Again, making learning.sap.com, this whole new learning experience completely for free, adding those learning journeys in there, and really kind of tying in the community aspect with the Discover More so that you don't have to stop right now. I mean, again, Tom mentioned it before, we mentioned it, all the other co-hosts mentioned it as well. Go to communities.sap.com. If you're not a member already, just sign up and start engaging, start talking to people that are interested in the same topics that you are, or maybe learn about something that is completely new. And again, 48 hours of jam-packed content, or 49 if we're counting the pre-show, but you also get the content on demand available later. So at your own pace, at your own leisure, you can just continue to review the sessions that you're most interested in, sessions that you maybe missed in these past 48 hours, or workshops that you just want to try over and over again. You can do that all um, after the event as well. And then just one other kind of personal highlight on my side. I really enjoyed being a co-host again here on Channel One. I enjoyed doing it with you, Rui, and I enjoyed do it with, doing it with the entire team. You only see us on stage here with maybe some guests um, and the other co-hosts, but the amount of people that work on this to make this happen is insane. And everybody was great. Um, so, you know, keeping, up, keeping us up late at night with music or just supporting us, bringing us all the things that we need. We always have water. Everybody was bringing in and switching out our tablets, making sure that our cards were there, that we had all the notes, um, that all the interviewers that we, interviewees that we had were on time, that they were prepped, that they knew when they need to come in. So it's just, a, it's, it yes. wouldn't be able to be, be this great without the amazing team that we have in the back end. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank everybody, especially you, Daniela, um, for, yeah, for supporting us here. Yeah, so we're standing on the shoulders of giants. So you just see the top, but there is a lot of people supporting. And that was all, actually also one of my highlights. So having um, a huge team, as you said, right? So uh, from developer, uh, um, 
relations over to the global events team, the production team, the marketing team, all the colleagues in development coming with their content. Uh, it's, it's. Uh, I, I was again amazed. I mean, it's not the first tech ad, right? So <laughs> I went through many tech ads before uh, already, but uh, it's it's amazing to see also this virtual setup here and so many people working here and to pr to really deliver a great a great event. Um, I actually loved the 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 two keynotes uh, very much. So both the developer keynote and as well as the keynote from Jürgen Müller with all the announcements where I'm a big fan of the free tier uh, service plan so that we <laughs> finally have another way yeah, to get people into a productive uh, setup right immediately with uh, free tier services that they can use. And once they feel like, yeah, that's the stuff I want, right? They click on a button and can get productive. Um, I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, I'm also happy to have... Uh, found a, a like-minded friend here at TechEd. Uh, so DJ, I must confess, I'm also a terminal guy. I really love um, to, to be not alone, so... Uh, you heard it here first, guys. Rui yeah, is a terminal so, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that much as, uh, as DJ, but, but still, um, it's, it's fantastic. And DJ and I are also working on a few projects already. Um, so that was good. Um, and what I also liked a lot, this time we had many, many customers and, and partners. I think Jürgen mentioned it at the beginning, uh, something around 40% of all the sessions we've had, uh, we either had a customer or partner in here. So uh, that's fantastic. So not, that's not only SAP talking about SAP, but having really uh, customers who actually bring across uh, in a very uh, honest um, way what they really liked and where they still see challenges, I think that's that's fantastic. Um, that, that's what I um, liked a lot. And uh, also on a, on a personal note, um, my, um, my uh, uh, best session that I liked for me as Rui was DYI Perks. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I already have an idea to build what uh, Matt Perks actually showed to have this the uh, Bluetooth speaker. The, the Bluetooth speaker. Um, maybe it's a, it's a Christmas present for somebody at home, but I don't see the name now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it a secret. Yeah, nobody yeah. is listening. Yeah. Um, we're actually going to have Lena back here. She's going to be doing kind of the last update on the uh, social media wall. And she's also going to give us an update on the origami challenge. So hi, Lena, welcome back. Hello. Hi. Thank you for the last hour, or the almost last hour and 10 minutes of, of SAP TechEd this year. How are you feeling? Still great. But also a little sad now, yeah. actually, knowing that it's ending in roughly an hour. Yeah. I but, think you, but, you, but you sad. can now show the social media wall, what people actually posted. All the highlights. All the Finally. Highlights. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I haven't done that for the last couple of hours. <laughs> I'll start with it now. <laughs> yeah, no, I really wanted to share all the highlights so far. Yeah. And we had so many cool highlights. And uh, Rui and Ceci, thanks for sharing your highlights already. I wanted to now share your highlights. Um, your highlight. <laughs> so, good. hashtag UTFRW is back again in TechEd 2021. We have again, not again, we have Casimir. We had him last uh, year, but now we actually had its own hashtag for it. So, hashtag SAP TechEd Cat, but you also used heavily hashtag Casimir, like that too. Hashtag DevToberfest, hashtag DocToberfest and hashtag developer keynote because you really enjoyed the developer keynote. So many screenshots of our developer advocates. I loved it. Then hashtag pets of SAP TechEd. We had that a lot last year and again this year. Really like that too. We have our hashtag origami challenge or the very long one that I came up with, hashtag SAP community <laughs> origami challenge. Uh, you shared your favorite sessions. You shared your favorite um, quotes and you shared your favorite screenshots really from all the sessions that we had. I'd like to start with a couple of uh, posts that came in the last um, hours. So one is from Koya from Belgium, who asks DJ Adams for a cooking tutorial. So dear DJ, aka <laughs> Professor, if you're seeing that, we'd like to have a cooking tutorial. And for everyone who doesn't know yet, so we have developers.sap.com, where we have a lot of tutorials about actually not cooking yet. I don't know whether that makes it onto our developers.sap.com site, but DJ, get creative. Challenge for you there. I would see that. I, would, I mean, I would look at that video. <laughs> yeah, me too. 
Me too. <laughs> so we all want to see that. <laughs> then Sebastiano Marchesini posted that he is wishing and promising for SAP TechEd next year, live or remotely. And he actually added a few bullets. So first one is meet all my community friends. And he tagged Menina Chow, our SAP channel host star, Sebastian Wolf and Neil Paxson, one of our SAP champions. Also, he wishes to get a lot of gadgets. Yeah, we can do that because we have Casimir, we have a lot of SAP gadgets, uh, we can do that. Uh, he wants to have, that's my favorite, a signed t-shirt, a TechEd t-shirt from all the developer all-stars. All-stars. All the stars, not just Josh. And he wants to have <laughs> hashtag Casimir. And he posted exactly that post slash thread also in our SAP TechEd group. So have a look there to know about all the responses and who else is wishing for what else actually in the upcoming SAP TechEd next year. Then, as Ceci just mentioned, so we had our origami challenge and we have a winner because we had one post that got the most kudos wow. in our um, SAP, no, coffee corner group in the SAP community. And that is that cool golden frog there from Ian Kimball. So congratulations, Ian. I have a little something for you. Can we maybe zoom in here? So that is a signed SAP TechEd Channel One um, card, our moderat moderator cards, uh, signed from all the Channel One hosts. Only for you, I will send it over to you. I just followed you in the SAP community, DM'd you, um, and you will get this one with all our signatures slash autographs, if we can name Excellent. it autographs. Yeah, yeah, yeah autographs, yeah? of course, we're famous, yes. right? I mean, come on. <laughs> we're not Josh. Yeah, no, no. Um, then we have a tweet from Twen Vandenberg. I hope that pronunciation is correct. Um, so he guesses that they now start, we now start the SAP Cinematic Universe, SCU. What a great SAP TechEd developer keynote it was. So you really enjoyed the keynote, we did too. Um, yeah, we should think about that SAP Cinematic Universe. <laughs> I like that I one too. I love how everything is an acronym though. It's like SCU, yeah. the whole, I still don't remember the run, walk thing. UTFRW. UTFRW, yeah, no, it's, it's so easy. So easy. Yes. And actually, <laughs> to be really, really specific, uh, DJ and Phil Cooley added also um, a role. It should be UTFRWR, because they <laughs> added runner, not yeah. just running. Oh, so you can roll? Walking, but you could also roll. Like rollerblade? Or I have to or skateboarding? I think it was walk, right? Or, no, but walk is a W, but then roll is like either you're roller or you're just oh. rolling. I, okay, okay we, 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 we can ask them. We'll clarify that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> rolling over the ground. We saw that already in the moderator room. Okay, we yeah. can go there. Yeah. Juliana, looking at you. All right. <laughs> okay, uh, one more from the Innovation Netherlands group, I'd say. We had a lot of fun during our SAP Tech at Watch Party, so there was another watch party going on. Good entertainment from all the SAP rock stars, good discussions, laughs, nice meal, and a lot, lots of fun overall. So I like that um, screenshot here too. And one from Beth. As I mentioned before, we had SAP uh, pets of SAP TechEd again. Oh. So Beth Shores, a uh, little doggy, or big doggy, I don't know. <laughs> uh, when you can get back to the laptop, when you cannot get back to the laptop quick enough to watch more SAP Tech at Channel 1. And when you want to watch more SAP Tech at Channel 1, we have all of our sessions and all of our great hours, all of Highlights. our topic hours recorded, mm -hmm. so you can watch that at any time again soon. That was so much from the overall highlights of social media. Thank you, Lena. That was Thank great. You. And talking about highlights, I think we actually have a highlights video, right, that we want to play? So yep. let's check that out. And stay around for the closing show. Don't miss it. Yeah.